Congratulations, you decided that you wanted to learn how to ride trials and you found a channel on YouTube that's chock full of tutorials. That's great, but the question you're probably asking yourself now is, which one do I learn first? Where do I start? And this video is exactly that. I'm gonna share the five most fundamental skills when it comes to learning trials. These skills are what everything else is built on top of. Trials is so much of an iterative process. You can start on the smallest thing with the most basic skill and use that to get better and better and better and stack on different skills and, and build from there. So we're gonna start with those basic five. If you've already started writing trials, you definitely wanna revisit this video to see, do I have these five things unlocked? Because if you don't, learning some of the other stuff might actually be harder. So you get these totally locked in and then move on to the rest. This is really our starting point, our foundation for learning this skill. You should be able to do all five of these. Everything else will become a lot easier. To start things off, I wanna tell you that you can ride any bike when you're learning these five skills. It doesn't require a specific trials bike. Certainly having a trials bike will make all these even easier, but I remember when I was a kid, I broke my trials bike and rode my mom's bike to learn these skills and to practice them. So you can do any bike you can get your hands on will get you there. The first skill we're gonna work on is lifting up and moving around the front wheel. Wheel placement is a huge part when it comes to trials riding and we're gonna start with the front wheel. Now the best way to think about lifting up the front wheel is by unweighting it, taking your weight from your shoulders and everything and moving it back so that there's no weight over the front wheel. You put your hips kind of over the back wheel and you lean back. You're not pulling the handlebars into your chest, you're leaning your body back and pulling it up off the ground, just ever so slightly. You can do this while you're rolling, you don't have to be stopped in place. Just roll along and lift up the front wheel occasionally and get the feel for getting it up off the ground. Once you have that feeling kind of locked in, try it from a standstill where you lock your back wheel and you lift up on your front wheel and put it back down. See if you can do it a couple times. Anytime you're learning something new with trials, you wanna do it three times in a row. And the reason for that is that you've locked it in. First try could maybe have been just a fluke. Second try, maybe you got lucky that second time. But three times in a row, you definitely know that you've got it. So for these five techniques we're working on today, make sure you can do them all three times in a row, perfect. You'll be super confident and then you can move on from there. Now that you've mastered rolling along and lifting up the front wheel, what you wanna do now is slow down to a stop, grab your back brake and lift up your front wheel again. Same exact everything. This time, try going to the left or to the right. Move it back and forth until you're kind of using it to hold your balance. Let's move on to the second technique, which is very similar to the first. It's back wheel lifts and placement. So being able to lift it up off the ground and put it where you want it to be. So I've done a couple different endo tutorials on this channel and I've also done like a endo 180 video which will help you learn how to put your back wheel exactly where you want it to be. So learn the endo first and then go into pivoting the back wheel around. What you wanna think about is turning your handlebar in the opposite direction that you want your back wheel to go. And then you guide your back wheel with your back foot and that will push it into place. I'll link below in the description for the endo, the back wheel lift, and the endo 180. Those would be really helpful and I go really deep into all those, but I wanna keep things moving here into the next technique. Now that you've figured out how to lift your front wheel off the ground and your back wheel off the ground, I'm gonna teach you a way to keep yourself balanced on the bike without wearing yourself out. You see a lot of people try to hop in place or try to hold a track stand until they fall over. This way is actually a lot easier, a lot lower energy, and it keeps you in the same relative position without having to expend a lot of energy. And that's something that when you're doing a sport like trials, you really wanna have locked in. So what rocking is, is just like it sounds, rocking up onto the front wheel, rocking back onto the back wheel. And you just do little micro adjustments there. So you're just lifting your front wheel off the ground, maybe a quarter of an inch, if, if that. You don't even really have to come off the ground. You're just kind of rocking back and forth to keep your weight moving and to keep balanced in place. You could actually start to learn this one by accentuating your movements and getting really big where you go into an endo and then you rock it back to your back wheel and then you go back on the front. And then as you learn it and get better at it, you can just make the micro adjustments smaller and smaller and smaller until you're getting to that perfect point. Rocking is really easy because you're just moving your balance point to the front wheel, to the back wheel, and you're essentially kind of treading water on the bike in a way that maybe track standing won't allow you to do. Now I know that I talked about rocking as the most efficient way to keep your balance, but technique number four is hopping in place because there are situations where you need to hop the bike forward or hop the bike to maintain balance because you don't have enough room to really rock and keep in place. So 
So I wanna talk about hopping specifically. Hopping is one of those skills you can also learn while you're rolling along. In fact, it's kind of like the bunny hop you would do if you were clipped into the bike, where you're using both your arms and your legs to kind of pull the bike up into your body. You'll use that same scoop method that you did to pull the back wheel off the ground to get that back wheel up. And again, this is one of those things where you can start really big, pulling the bike up as much as possible, and then the more efficient you get at it, the less you have to do it. This is also one of those skills where it's kind of fun to learn because you can try to get three hops in a row, then go to four, then to five, and see how many you can get at a time. So many of the things that we're learning right now, it's like, how many times can I move my front wheel without having to put my foot down? How many times can I move my back wheel without having to put my foot down? How many times can I hop in place without putting my foot down? And that's exactly what we wanna learn because so much of trials riding is, how much can I ride my bike without putting my feet down? And these are the skills that are gonna give you that. So it's staying balanced in place, it's moving your wheels around. This is all foundational and all super important that's gonna give you all the skills to build on. So same thing here, roll along, do some hops until you feel both wheels come off the ground at the same exact time, then slow it down and do it at a slower pace until you can do it from a stop where you're just hopping in place. This is like technique 4B, but you should also learn track standing because technique four is really just rounding out all the different ways that you can balance a bike. That's something that should be always in your repertoire no matter what, if you can hop in place, if you can rock in place, if you can track stand in place. There's a track stand tutorial on this channel as well that will really help you dive into that technique. But either way, you want to be able to use every single ability to balance the bike so you don't have to put your feet down. And that's technique number four. Technique number five, we're finally going to pedal our bike. What we're working on now, and one of the most vital skills to have as a trials rider, is the connection between your brakes and your pedals. So much of the advanced trials riding skill is my brakes are locked up, I let go of the brakes slowly as I push on the pedals quickly and then I grab the brake again. There's so much interaction between those two things, you really have to get it wired. And that's what we're gonna talk about in number five. This technique is all about timing. What I'm trying to do here is coordinate my pedals with my back brake. And what I wanna be doing, I'm rolling towards a crack or a curb or whatever I'm working with, with my feet level, with my strong dominant foot forward. I crank them back just a little bit as I'm rolling closer to it. As I get to the obstacle, I'm gonna grab my brake to stop and balance in place. Then I'm going to slowly let off the back brake and push on the pedal to lift my front wheel up onto that ledge. Now this technique is super helpful because you're learning how to use your pedals to get your bike to move around and specifically to lift your back wheel up, which is gonna come in handy when it comes to learning how to pedal kick on the back wheel, how to do gaps, how to do side hops, how to ride up onto stuff. This very specific basic movement is gonna pay into all of your trials riding in a really big way. And it seems so basic and so minor, but once you have it figured out how you let go of your back brake and how you push on the pedals, so much of trials riding is gonna be unlocked. These five techniques may seem relatively easy to pick up or relatively simple, but you'd be amazed how far you can go once you have all five of them locked in. You can combine one or two of them to go really far when it comes to learning a different technique. And you'd be surprised how much they unlock along the way. Even if you don't learn any other trial skills, having those five locked in will make you such a better and more confident bike rider in general. So hopefully you go down the rabbit hole and learn trials like the rest of us. But even if you don't, these are five really helpful skills that will make a substantial impact on your riding. You may notice this giant warehouse behind me filled with trials obstacles and the main reason we have it is so that we can do a weekly live stream. Every Tuesday and Thursday I go live on Twitch and I'm there to answer your questions. So this video is obviously a great primer to get you started, but if you have questions as you're learning it or questions as you advance, please join us on the Twitch channel and we'll walk you through everything you need to know. Thanks again for being here. Definitely check out the trials tutorial to dig deeper into each one of the things I talked about here and the ones that go beyond it. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again.